Hi, welcome to a new tutorial from my channel. This video is about Apache NetBeans for PHP development. I will cover different parts of the IDE, different features and capabilities, and how to use it for PHP development. Apache NetBeans is a powerful IDE that you can download from netbeans.apache.org. So first of all, you need to download it from this website, netbeans.apache.org. Once you press the download button, you will head over to the uh, download page that contains different links for different operating systems. You can get the binary and you can get the installers for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Once you install it on your system, you can start development with NetBeans. So let's get started with the first topic, syntax highlighting. First, you have a project. You have created a project in the IDE with one of the options that are available, like this button that creates a project or this button that creates a file. So you have created a project or you have opened the project that you have created before. Once you have the project open in the IDE, you can check out the different parts. You can click a file, you can open it and you can see we have a good syntax highlighting and we also have auto completion. So to check if it is good about auto completion, I'm going to delete one of the parts from this file. Looks like this is a read only file uh, and I need to make some changes. So I go to tools and select open in terminal. I'm in the directory here. So I change chmod to 777 or I change its owner to myself. So chown index.php. I enter my password and now I can edit it. Here, for example, I'm gonna delete server I'm gonna use uh, I'm gonna write part of the server super global and then by pressing control and, sh and control and space it will auto complete it for me and it is of course much more powerful than this there are uh, many different functions in PHP, built-in PHP functions that also you can autocomplete. For example, the explode function. For example, you have something. Uh, you have a string that you want to cut to several substrings. You can simply type part of explode and then it will show you the online documentation for that function what that function does and also it will complete it for you by pressing the tab or control and space. So let me restore what we had here, request URI and save it. So this is for syntax highlighting. And in addition to PHP, this syntax highlighting also works for JavaScript and HTML to a great extent. The next topic is Compose support. So as PHP developers, we love to use Compose to manage dependencies of our project. So to show that, I'm going to open another project that I have named Awesome Shop that is based on Composer. And because it contains composer file on their source files, I can do different composer related operations. To do that, I right click on the root project and then select composer and hit one of the available options and commands for composer. 
If I don't already have a composer file, I can press init to create a composer file. If I have the composer file, I can install its dependencies with install dev or install no dev and also update the dependencies with one of the update commands that are available. So for example, I press update dev and the output is shown for me as it does its thing and installs, installs the development packages that I have declared inside the composer file. So this was for composer support and if you have composer file and you want to add some new dependency you can simply select composer and add dependency and search for a dependency from here for example you can search for laminus one of laminus packages and sub packages press search and there are many available packages that you can find and add the required one to your project the next thing that we want to talk about is built-in terminal as developers we love built-in terminal because we can run our custom commands inside the terminal like git commands or composer commands or other commands to open built-in terminal inside NetBeans go to tools and open in terminal that opens a terminal a new terminal inside the IDE and changes its directory to the root of your project as you can see so it's pretty nice it's a bash terminal that gives you a lot of options and you can use all the features of the bash terminal the next thing and the next topic is xdebug support xdebug is used for php development and for its debugging if you don't already know so for example i have my project here the previous project that i had open and i want to do some debugging here to do that i'm gonna first set a breakpoint here you see that already i have a breakpoint and then i need to make sure that my web server is running so i open localhost you see it's not running so i'm gonna start the web server so i say sudo systemctl start httpd this starts my apache web server and now i run localhost and you can see that it is running i can even make a change here add something here for example in the beginning of the file to show you that it is working welcome to my site and you can see it is reflected here so now i'm gonna try to debug this file from my website first you need to make sure that the path of your project is mapped to the path of your site on your server so this means that the files that i have open here their directory structure is the same as the files that i have on my server after that you set the breakpoint and you hit this file the, this icon the debug icon so this waits for the that means xdebug to connect to the ide and once the connection is established we can see the list of variables and watch their uh, values as they change note that setting up xdebug in NetBeans is a little bit tricky so sometimes this connection is easily established sometimes you need to do some uh, changes and then you can succeed so here for example I'm gonna cancel this because it's not connect connecting to the xdebug 
and then it shows the settings that I need to add to my XDebug settings. So my XDebug version is 3, so the settings for XDebug 3 are given to me. They are copied to clipboard. And now I can add them to my XDebug file. But because I already have them added, I am going to restart the PHP FPM service. So restart PHP FPM. Now let's try again. See if we can connect. No, not yet. The next thing you can try is to look at the settings for your project, the run settings. So right click properties and then go to run configuration and you can see we have run as set to local web service and we also have an advanced section like this and the default is this we have the path mapping server path and the project path we have done the mapping so that the Xdebug knows which file we are debugging. So it looks like everything is good. So let's try again. We can also use one of the Xdebug add-ons to help us trigger the Xdebug session, like this one, enable debugging, or the Xdebug helper this is the xdebug helper add-on set it to debug and then restart the file refresh the file not working. The next thing I'm going to try is taking a look at the XDebug settings. So sudo vi etc uh, php.d15xdebug. This is the XDebug settings. So I'm going to change this from debug to develop. Probably this will help me to succeed. So restart PHP FPM and also the Apache web service. Run it. No, not yet. Okay, it turns out that this was in turn because of the Selenix that was running on my system. So I disabled Selenix temporarily with setm 40 and now it is working. So I start the Xdebug. I start debugging. And you can see this web page is opening for my local web server. And that means Xdebug is connected. And uh, I'm stopped at the first line of the script. Now I can get over different lines with these different icons. I can continue execution or I can step over the current line. I can uh, step over or step into the current command that is running. For example, let's do a step uh, step over to go one by one and the shortcut for that is F8 so as we press F8 we run these commands and we run these lines one by one and every line that is executed the variables on that line are initialized and their value is changed so we can check these values from variable section here. So for example, the parts have been initialized here. 
the the request URI part that I am receiving from the server Super Global is received here and it is put in the route variable and you can see the route variable is not yet initialized but the parts is parts has two members it's an array and you can see that the second member of it is this variable so basically this is how you can do debugging with uh, NetBeans using xdebug so I continue execution by pressing the play button and the script is played and executed the next topic I'm gonna talk about is remote development sometimes you have a website that is running live on a website and you can also developing it with NetBeans how you can do that for example I'm gonna put my website on a virtual machine on a virtual machine that I have on a virtual server in fact you can think that this server is running in a remote loca uh, location like in another country or uh, on a remote server in a uh, like data center somewhere let's open the server and I'm gonna set up a user account here so that I can web I can put my website and upload it to the server and then do the development remotely let's do that first I'm gonna add a new user so let's change this to root okay let's do that with sudo because I don't have a root password so sudo add user and add user I'm gonna name it like web uh, admin or webmaster I added the user and now I'm gonna set a password for it for example sudo pass with the webmaster I'm gonna set a password a simple password for it like for example one two three four I retype it one two three four and it is up and running never use such password such easy password for your real users and your user accounts of course now I'm gonna create a uh, the path that I want to give it for the server so I already have Apache server running here so I go to the path for our www.html currently it doesn't have anything but I'm gonna do some changes here note that I'm gonna put this website on the server so for that uh, because it's a little bit complicated uh, let's do the second one because this is easier so currently it doesn't have any files but I'm gonna put a file here uh, first you need to tell the IDE how it can connect to that server so right click on your project and then select properties and then run configuration and then select the run as to remote website and then enter its IP address so currently I don't have the IP address I enter if config to get the IP you can also say IPA to get the IP address so my IP address for the server is this 192.168.122.129 so first let's make sure that we can ping it from our local server 
our local host so let's do that from within our terminal ping yes fortunately we can ping it so again right click select properties run configuration remote local no remote website the project URL will be HTTP the IP address the index file is index.php arguments and we need to set up an FTP connection to transfer the files back and forth to our website so I select manage and here I add a new FTP connection I name it my virtual server and its type is FTP you can also say SFTP to make it secure okay and now let's enter the credentials my username is webmaster the port is 22 the user the host name uh, of course the host name is our IP address the username is webmaster webmaster <laughs> webmaster and the password is 1234 and let's Check the connection. It's not working. Why? Don't need a private connection. The initial directory is var www and HTML. We need to put the files in that directory. So let's check everything. Test connection. It doesn't work and that's because the SSH service is not currently running so I need to start it sudo systemctl start SSH or I can say enable SSH now this will enable and start it at the same time SSH DF course okay now I can connect. Now I can connect. Yes. Connection succeeded. So now my connection is established to the remote server and I can put my files back and forth. So here from the list of uh, from the drop down for remote connections, select my virtual server. The upload directory is by default var www.html it is correct so I don't change it and you can select when to upload the files either on run or on save or manually I'm gonna select manually to only upload the files when I want so there are some other options we don't want to talk about them for now they are not very important and now I'm gonna deploy my site my very simple website to the remote server the way I do it is by selecting resources the source files and then upload this will upload the files that I select to my web server so I select upload and it will upload but will face an error permission denied and I expected this because the user is not an admin that can access var www.html so on the server I'm gonna select the owner of HTML change the owner to webmaster so I say sudo chown webmaster webmaster and HTML this is now the new owner then naturally will have access uh, and will have the right to 
read and write from that directory so again source files upload select the file you want to upload and press upload and it is succeeded now I will be able to access it if everything goes right I can say I can press run project and it should open it but without HTTPS why it is opening it with HTTPS I'm not sure uh, let's open a private connection index.php it is weird let's open it with curl note that we can already ping it but we cannot see the website and it's weird how about index.php it cannot okay I suspect that the service does the server does not allow port 80 on the server so I need to enable it with firewall cmd sudo firewall cmd and then add port add port 80 tcp and permanent and then reload it sudo firewall cmd reload now let's try again there we go you can see that it is running the website but it is not successfully running PHP and why is that probably uh, the PHP module is not enabled on the server and that's another thing that we need to worry about let's restart PHP FPM so do systemctl restart PHP FPM and refresh our page no httpd also restarted what about now there we go now php is recognized and it is executed now let's make some changes and upload to our remote server in index.php file i'm gonna add a new div for example with style background color background color yellow and inside it I'm gonna write something like for example this is a new change from local development machine but this is gonna be synced to that remote server so I right click and then upload or I can say synchronize and the synchronize will show you the different scenarios that you can select currently these files are not available on the server only index.php is so you select which operation to do which for each file here I select index.php and I select to for example upload or download or upload or download so I upload it here and say synchronize and for these I suspect that if I don't do anything these files will be will be deleted from my local host so let's stop synchronization and simply do an upload so upload select the file to upload and it is uploaded and there we go this is the new change that is applied to my, on my website so you see that we have a good feature 
for remote development and synchronization with remote machines and remote servers in NetBeans and Apache NetBeans. So the next topic I'm going to talk about is database support. So in case you have a database you want to connect to, it is possible, for example, on my local machine, I have a database that I want to connect to. And I want to see if I can see those web, uh, those databases inside NetBeans. It is very handy, you know. So I go to the services section from the left pane, and here we have a section for databases. I select databases, and you can see that I already have a database called my MariaDB database. Or I have another one, MySQL server, at this. So I'm going to create a new database connection to show you how it works. So new connection, and it is MySQL, whether you have MySQL server or MariaDB server, uh, you will use the MySQL driver. So I select MySQL driver, and the driver file is uh, this one. I have already downloaded from Oracle website, MySQL connector Java 8, and I put it in my downloads directory. You need to do this for this driver to work. Then press next. Select the host, which is localhost. Select database name, username, and password. So I'm not currently sure what these values are. So I close this and look to see if I have them in my Docker file or my Docker compose file. So uh, I think I have them in my environment variable file. I have an in file, yes. This is awesome shop. I'm going to use these values to connect. First, let's try them in the terminal to make sure that they work. So I say MySQL minus u. The username is the user, and the password will be used. And the database name is Awesome Shop. Let's enter the password, which is this. Uh, it is not running. Uh, host DB. Let's create a user. Let's use root minus p and let's connect to awesome shop. Enter the root password. Okay, doesn't exist yet. No problem. Let's simply connect to our database, our database server, and see the list of databases, show databases. Okay, we have a database called Laravel. I'm not sure which user has access to it. So let's create a new database. Create database mydb. It already exists. Oh my god. <clears throat> Do I have that in my Docker Compose file? I'm going to name it db1 and then I'm going to create a user called db user. Create user user1, let's name it, identified by 1, 2, 3, 4, and then grant its privileges, grant all privileges on db1 to our user, 
which is user one. But I forgot to specify localhost for the user, so let's not forget that when defining our user. Okay, it failed. Let's rename it to something else. Let's simply name it U and then grant all privileges to U at sign local host. Okay. Now we should be able to connect to the uh, database. Let's make a new connection. Next, host is local host, database is db1. The username is u, the password is 1234. And let's test the connection. Connection succeeded, very good. And next, and finish. Now that we have uh, access to the database and the connection name is very ugly we need to rename it to something better of course so let's see which one we created now yes it was this so let's rename it to something better let's name it db1 okay it can't be renamed but we can find it. Now, for example, you can do operations on your database. You can create tables. You can query tables. You can query variables, uh, values, and execute different commands for your database. So, for example, I'm going to create a table. I'm going to create a table named user. I'm going to add a column ID and set its type to int and uh, let's make it primary and unique and let's auto increment it also let's add a new column full name its type varchar set its type to varchar with a size of 100, for example, and okay. And that's it for now. Auto increment is not correct. So let's make some changes, remove the default. Okay, and it's correct. Now let's enter some data, execute command insert into user id full name and values the values that i want to enter one mehdi akdu for example and then the second column to john Smith, another row, three, Jack, Snow, four, Mary Williams, and that's enough for four rows to our database. Let's run and execute the command with Control Shift E or by clicking this icon. And you can see it was executed successfully, no errors occurred. And to make sure that now the database connects, the database 
now contains the data that we added I'm gonna query or I can say I can right click and say view data and it shows the data available in the database so it's it's got a very good support for database and it means it's pretty good in this aspect the next topic I'm going to talk about is customization or themes. NetBeans has a couple of themes. You can find them from tools, options, and then appearance. By default, it has uh, one of these themes. I, sh I think it's uh, flat left light by default. I have set it to flat left dark, but uh, if you change one to one of them, you need to restart the IDE to apply the changes and see the new look and feel. So for example, let's change it to Dark Nimbus and then press OK. And then it requires a restart, so let's restart it. Exit IDE. Yes, the back session ended because we restarted our IDE. It takes some time for the IDE to start. And that's it, the new app, the new look and feel for my IDE. There's something that I don't like about that means, and that's the fact that you cannot easily change the font size for different uh, themes that are available or at least I'm not aware I have looked a lot in different parts but I have not found it the fonts and colors that you see here are mostly for code and code customization but not for the menus and for the font size of the terminal and so on and so forth so that's something that I think needs improvement in that means and uh, it will probably with this change it will be more similar to other more powerful or uh, let's say more feature complete IDEs like PHP Storm or VS Code in terms of customization and the next thing I'm gonna talk about is container support the container support is also available in NetBeans. So let's go back to our project and try one of our projects. The HTML project. I have a Docker file here. Let's open it. It's a very simple Docker file. It simply copies all the files in our current directory to var www.html and then runs when the container starts it runs the Apache server and hosts the files from this directory. So let's see how it works. I right click the Docker file and select build and then select build instance. But before doing all this, you need to make sure that you have Docker installed and running on your system. So currently I have Docker, Docker socket, running on my system of course it's not docker engine i am using podman but it's basically the same thing it's doing the same thing and uh, netbeans sees that as the docker socket so build instance is local docker i press next and then build context is the current directory in which our files are located so it is for www.html and repository is where you want to push the file if you want to push somewhere to some repository in the future you can specify a repository here but because I'm gonna save it locally only I simply don't enter anything here I just specify a tag and I specify a tag of for example my web image 
the repository must not be empty when using tag. Yes, that's right. I'm going to use localhost as my repository. And then press next. The Docker file is Docker file by default. You can specify another file, of course, that contains Docker commands. And then press finish. This starts running the Docker file, starts creating the Docker files, fetching the Docker files, and you can see that it is failing to bind to the address, to the address, which is 80. And uh, that's probably because it thinks that it needs to bind the IP, uh, sorry, the port that is specified inside our image, which is 80 for HTTPD, to the same port on the local host. And that's the problem that happens because my 80 port on the local host is already occupied by my local HTTPD server. So it will not work. So let's uh, run it again, but without actually running Apache foreground service. Let's build it again. Next, next. This time you see that I don't even specify repository and it doesn't say anything if I don't specify, but I'm gonna pass it anyway. I'm gonna specify it anyway. So let's simply say my image and next finish. And there we go. The image was created and it was tagged localhost my image so this is for docker file support of course it doesn't have support for docker compose file it only supports partially docker file and it's pretty good not bad so next thing the next topic is testing support if you want to run some testing uh, NetBeans has uh, t testing support for several frameworks. I have not worked with all of them. It has support for PHP unit, for example. Before you can be able to run PHP unit tests, you need to do some configuration in your settings. For PHP unit, you need to specify the PHP unit executable. So for example, I have the editor section in the PHP section I have frameworks and tools I have PHP unit and then I have specified user bin PHP unit as PHP unit script that will run the tests for me in my project so once you have specified that and you have a test in your project you can run the test for example I have in my SRC directory I have some tests some simple tests let's first find it I'm sure I had created some tests over here let's see if I can find the test file yes it's here test file Uh, here so I'm gonna run it I can right click again on the source files on the uh, root in fact the root project and the root project run selenium test no our test is in fact this one the test failed for some reason no test passed while asserting that two strings so the test failed here but it's not important to make sh uh, 
to make this work I can simply say assert equals equals one one these two strings are equal and our test will pass this is just a very simple example to show you that test works like this I run the test again and you see that the test passed so this is a, a little scratch on the topic of testing in NetBeans you can see that it has support for testing using PHP unit so the next topic is source control or git support of course git is not the only source version control for software development but is probably the most popular so I'm gonna talk about git so it has git support we have git support in NetBeans and because my project already has a git repository and I can confirm it by uh, going to terminal uh, in fact tools and open in terminal and here you can say git status and you see that the uh, this has an output showing that I am in a git repository so you can either do your git commands you can run them from the terminal or you can right click on your project select git and uh, let's select the source files first where is my git I'm looking for my git I'm sure I had it here where is it yes see that we have git here we have git here as well I didn't see that in the first site so you select git and then select the subcommand for git like show changes to see the changes that you have created and compare the changes from your current working directory with the head of your git repository and you can run other commands for example you can run a diff you can even commit your changes or you can revert modifications or you can shelve changes you can reset or revert changes so let's reset our change that we applied in our test file for example I'm gonna reset it so let's do that author date everything is here edit rewrite line here as well okay I'm gonna reset this do not modify index let's do a hard reset I'm gonna reset everything that I have added and I have not committed so press reset and the changes will be reset and you can see both are now the same my changes that I had added are now gone so this is uh, some small talk about git support in NetBeans but uh, because I hate this uh, new theme that I have applied let's return it back to our previous theme so I select options from tools appearance look and feel and again select flat flat lack dark and okay restart the next thing I'm gonna talk about in NetBeans and we will cover is add-on support does NetBeans have support for add-ons and for extensibility is it extensible and the answer the short answer is yes but the ecosystem for it is not that large in fact the core developers of NetBeans the core community that works around NetBeans are creating the plugins that are available so there are a handful of plugins not too many of them and to see them 
you can select tools and plugins there are some plugins that are available once you install the DIDE you only need to enable them for example available plugins here they are already available in the ID but uh, you only need to enable them to use their features for example PHP version switcher or support for different PHP frameworks like PHP WordPress block CMS PHP cake PHP framework and so on and so forth or adding support for vagrant by enabling the vagrant plugin so these are a handful of plugins that are available some of them are based on the base IDE some of them are created as extensions by the community that you can add and also uh, uh, I, I think I need to clarify something here the available plugins are those that you can select and download them they are not installed by default and also we have a section for installed that contains the list of plugins that are installed and some of them are enabled some of them are not enabled those that have a green tick mark they are enabled and they have features written in front of them for example we have PHP enabled means that we have support for PHP development we have Java SE enabled uh, meaning that Java SE development is enabled and you can do Java e, uh, SE development and so on and so forth by default only a handful of these are enabled only a few are enabled and you can enable others like C++ and so on here I have enabled almost all of them so I close it and that's it for plugin support in comparison with VS Code and PHP Storm probably it's not that uh, featureful in terms of the plugins and it, it it does not have that much of uh, that much of an ecosystem and that many plugins available so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is uh, we already talked about HTML and CSS support NetBeans has good support for HTML and CSS uh, although I didn't show but it's like PHP support you need uh, you know when you type a tag when you are developing HTML for example you see an online documentation for it and you also have some auto completion available and for JavaScript as well so uh, I think we're almost done talking about NetBeans for PHP development and in the end of this video I'm gonna talk about some features that I think are recommended for this IDE and this uh, these although NetBeans is very good IDE and it's very nice for PHP development but if the developers for this IDE add these new features it will make it great great these features are first text resize easy text resize if you can for example hit control hold control and scroll up and down and resize the text inside the IDE resize the text for different panes like the project pane the terminal it will be very nice and uh, oh look at this the terminal already had has this and it's very nice but this part doesn't have it and the index.php doesn't have it the files inside the editor doesn't don't have it easily you have to go to the theme settings and change this text size from there but for this part the left part I don't know exactly 
including the items in the menu, how you can resize the text over here. And this is something that I think is lacking in this ID and is good to be added. And another thing that I think is very uh, necessary and very highly recommended for NetBeans is command palette. Nowadays, a lot of IDEs and at least some IDEs that are very popular like PHP Storm and VS Code have command palette. You can access them in VS Code with Control, sh uh, with Control Shift P in Windows and Linux with Control Command P on Mac OS. And once you open a command palette, you can search for a command and you can perform the operation that you are looking for without getting lost in the ID and its different parts looking for an operation to do. And uh, in PHP Storm, we have a similar thing. We have a command palette that opens up with Control Shift and A. And you can search for a command and you can run it and do the desired thing. And with these two additions, I think that means will be great. Uh, before I end up this video, uh, thank you. I want to thank you for watching this video. And I want to thank all the developers and the community of Apache NetBeans. It has an active community of developers and testers uh, that have made this uh, IDE for developers. Uh, for Java developers, for PHP developers, and for other developers like web developers, and um, possible without uh, paying a cost. In fact, this is a completely free and open source IDE from the Apache Foundation, and this is a very precious piece of software. So, thanks for watching. And I see you in another future video, hopefully soon.